Just don't do it a second before you're ready. Make sure that you're ready to do that. Talked about rejection. He said in Hollywood, rejection, the rejection rate is like 99%. Hey, like, you know, you're either working hard or you're not. See, I'm thinking about it. I don't know that I've ever done that in front of that many people. All right, we're here at the vault. Uh, the closing speaker, closing guest speaker, was the one and only Kevin Connolly. You know him, you love him, you've seen him all over uh, movies, all over Hollywood. Best known for Entourage, I think yeah. that's fair to say. Fair to say. Um, and, was that uh, the closing speaker? Yeah, bro. You didn't know that? No, I didn't know that. I mean, other Pat, than Pat, I, Pat's going to close it out. Well, yeah, it's his, his job, right? But it's the his closing gig. guest speaker. Right. Uh, but I, honestly, I'm thinking about it. I don't know that I've ever done that in front of that many people. Before. Really? Yeah, I mean, I've done panels, but it's usually yeah. with... Because there's the guys from there's about two thousand people, people, people in there, yeah, in there right? It's a lot. So you're saying you've never done like a panel live? I've done a panel, but not. It would be like you know, entourage related. So it'd be gotcha. all of us on a panel. So Got it's it. easier. This to is kind just of, you. Just me out there. I don't. Not quite sure. I've done. Yeah. Anything well, like that. It, it was fun. Pat's been like obviously I know who you are, and we'll get into like the entourage mindset. But Pat's been hyping you up for months now. So I, I want to know how that came about, and you don't do these th things all that often. You, I know you said panels and entourage right, with you right, and the crew, but right. how did everything happen with Pat and Valuetainment? You know, one, one of the things that I, I, I think is lacking, and, and not I'm even fair to say Hollywood, but just um, people are afraid to like reach out and like compliment people, right? Like it's gonna make you not look cool or something, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. And I just have never kind of been that way, right? Yeah. And I'm like, like from, somehow Pat's like, and Valuetainment is just in my sort of algorithm. So it's just popping up a lot, right? And I see all this <laughs> kind of stuff. And I just did, shot him at DM today, man. Keep up with your freaking awesome. That's it, just yell it up. up yeah, man, I Sick. love your stuff, man, keep it up. And then he wrote back and we just kind of started. Then we got on the phone and, um, you know, and he, you know, Pat can, you know, it's, it, you know, it's funny when you talk about Minnick, right? It's like, yeah. had the amount of times I said to Pat, yo, can I pick your brain for five minutes and I want to run something by him, yeah. right? It's like, which is the idea kind of behind it. But, um, you know, he's so smart, you know? And, uh, yeah, I just like, I like the content. That's why I was asking you guys, asking about your cameras. Yeah. Just the whole setup that you yeah, guys he got had, going, had, Kevin had on one right. major question, the cameras. How are we doing? That's like, oh, that's a it lot of money. It just looks really good. Yeah. Oh, man, your stuff looks cool. really good. Thank you, bro. Well, I, um, I want to cover three things with you uh, in, the, in this interview. I want to talk about, obviously, Hollywood and Entourage and the concept of rolling with your crew. Right. That's a big thing for me. It's a big thing for our audience is having a crew to roll with. And then I want to talk about success, rejection, everything that kind of comes with the good and the bad of that. And then relationships, women. You just, right. you're, you've been with your, your lady four years. You yes. just had a kid a, a 18 months ago. 15 months ago today. 15, 15 months 15 ago. 15 months ago today. Yeah. Awesome, bro. As a, and as why, you know, I also used to, whenever somebody would say that, I'd go, well, why just, let's just call it a year. Why 15 <laughs> months? But yes. now you realize it matters developmentally. Okay. 15 months is different than 12 months. Correct. I basically was just super judgmental before I had a baby. Well, I think, <laughs> I, I, I think it comes in where it's like, because all my friends have had kids and I'm, I'm single, no kids, looking to get on your right. level, bro. And I think it after like, when you have to start doing long division in your hair, like, yeah, my kid's uh, 38 months. You're like, oh, so yeah. is he... Is he right. two years old or 10 years old? I got, I got no concept. Well, there. I was just happy when we graduated from weeks to months. <laughs> because it's like, you know, yeah, well, the baby's, uh, you know, whatever, 104 months. No, it's two, right? right. <laughs> or, or no, or tw whatever it is. We're, uh, well, we're doing no, long division in our weeks, heads. 100, yes. 104 weeks. Like, no, it's two years old. Awesome. Whatever it is. That's, so, I probably butchered that number. It's actually a perfect segue of you, you know, being an entourage and now being a family man, right. fair to say. Uh, so I want to kind of focus on this concept of, you know, rolling with your crew. And obviously, you had the most iconic crew, arguably of all time, and in the show, The Entourage. Right. Okay. Um, if you're looking at it from a like a crew of crews, yeah, I mean, like a right, guy, like a right, guy, right. like a guy's. I mean, it's definitely a memorable group of friends. Kevin, right. memorable. Yeah. I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. okay. So yeah. I think it's fair to say, like. Entourage, correct me if I'm wrong, 04 to 2011, that range. Right. Mid to late 12, 2000. 12, and then the movie was 15. Okay, exactly. Right. And then the movie came out, but the actual show. So um, I'm in my early 40s. You're in your mid, late 40s. 48. 48. It looks great. Are you freaking kidding me? We can't all hope to look this good <laughs> in 48. So, dude, at that time, I'm sure you hear this all the time. At that time, when you're in your mid-20s, whether you're a teenager, even mid-20s, I mean, you're, I was living with my boys in like a frat house type lifestyle. Right. You know, we were all just starting um, 
getting jobs, careers, we're making money for the first time ever. We're not in college anymore, but we had this like real world house that had six bedrooms. I'm in Miami and we're all paying a, you know, a couple grand, whatever, and we're living in this sick house and that's our crew. That's our entourage, right? right. And we're watching entourage like every dude does. Right. Every, Sunday nights? Sunday nights. Sunday yeah. nights. And we'd sit there and we'd be like, oh, bro, you're, that's, you're Vinny, bro. Okay, yeah. you're E. Oh, the turtle is like, hitting the bong, you know? Ari comes, like, everyone has their kind of, their crew. I, I, I obviously, countless times. Yes. I've been approached. Of course. By a group of dudes. And my question to them is always, and what makes you Vince, bro? Yeah. What's so great about you? Exactly. Uh, like, I don't say anything about That's exactly. always my, my joke to people. Like, well, you're declaring yourself He's like, Vince. yeah, I'm the Vince of my crew. <laughs> yeah, it's like, like, I'm like, right. Easy guy. Well, right. Did you designate yourself exactly. Vince? Exactly. Right, you, so you have to be told by the rest of the crew, you're the guy. That's got to be a group decision. Exactly. That's got to be a group decision. And you don't for get me, to just say that you're Vince. <laughs> for me, like here at Valuetainment, I'm, I'm totally comfortable with being the E, the number right. two guy. PBD is the number one guy. I know right. that for a fact. PBD is Vince. A hundred percent. Right. And I've had a couple of Vinces in my life, and I, I'll tell you about that. <laughs> uh, and I've always been comfortable being the number two guy, like being the, hey, the voice of reason, the business manager side of things. Right. So my question is- But you is, could argue that the yeah. number two guy isn't always the number two guy. How do you mean you know? by that? I mean, and if I say this with all respect and, and yeah. all humility, but I mean, you know, I was the first, the show was kind of about entourage, right? So yeah. one of the part of the things about E and Vince is that he was the guy that could tell Vince, like, oh, dude, you're wrong, right? Like, whatever, you, you don't have to like it. But, you know, there, there was no yes men. Vince was Correct. not surrounded by yes men. Correct. And I think that was a relatable thing. Even drama or turtle, like, maybe walk on eggshells a little bit. But for the most part, they were pretty straight with Vince, right? I think, I think I that's think important. You got to speak truth to power. And that's what I think is great, what, you know, like what you're basically saying, what I have with PVD, is to be like, all right, what's your thoughts on that? And we, we, Different opinions, we clash, right. and and, and that's okay. Say, and even right. on the podcast, people are like, "Dude, you, you just yelled and got in an argument with Pat, your boss, your CEO." I right. said, "What am I supposed to do? Just agree with everything he says?" So the, the, you're absolutely right on that. Right. The the where I was going with it is, all right, in your 20s and your 30s, you got your crew. I mean, there's songs about. Your crew, right? right? Drake's done a song about the crew, loving the crew. The Weeknd's done a the song. Like people talk, Kanye's done a song called My Click, My Click, Jay-Z. There's a song, Gold Link, My Crew. Like it, th this concept of a crew is, is so big for men. We have 90% of our audience is young men, right? right. Um, you're hanging with your crew, you're having the best of times. And then as you've seen what happens, bro, you start getting girlfriends. So they start having kids, right. start getting married. And then the crew starts being like, Hey, maybe I'll see you at the, the fantasy football draft, bro. You're not rolling with this crew. I want to know this transition of like single life, homies, crew. All right, now someone's getting a girlfriend. Walk me through that. Well, you know, you got to pick your spots, right? So, you know, um, I, I, it's, I am, I am a, a family man and everybody knows that. But when, you know, and, and luckily, my lady, I'm in a, in a enough, good enough relationship where she knows that I'm, I'm a family man and I'm there. So if on a night, I go, hey, uh, I'm gonna. It's a boys' night. Uh, the boys. <laughs> she doesn't. Uh, she's like, great, right? And and vice versa. She's like, do you mind if I have dinner with my friends? I'm like, <laughs> see you later. She asks you though, do you mind? Not if mind. I no. I mean, I think she's not. We are. At, our, it's just a courtesy mm. that we're asking because you know, then we're home with the kid or whatever. So. Yeah, she's not really asking me. I'm not yeah. really asking her, but we pose it in the form of a question. <laughs> right? Got it. But this this is your unique character, meaning you got. You didn't settle down until your mid forties, give or take. I did it my way. Frank Sinatra I, I, in the house I, I mean, over I, here. Listen, if I were gonna, yeah. you know, that's gonna be my theme song. And Tell I, us and that. I, I want to know I, that mindset. But I mean, I just, you know, and I, and I, I just wanted to, and it's I don't want to say so my wild oats, but like I, I don't, I'm, I don't look, I don't have FOMO. Mm -hmm. I don't ever look at something and be like at a party that my buddies are at and go like, oh, I miss it. I, I think like I've been there a thousand times. Yes. And currently I'm just happier here with my family, but it took maybe doing a little bit too much of 100%. that to really understand that what am I really missing? Yeah. Not missing, not missing anything. Um, but I'm still super tight with my friends and you know, you know, like I said, it's just, it, it's different. You, you pick the spots, right? Yeah. You pick your spots. Did you know that you were going to be settled down in your mid forties ish or you were like, it just, 
you wanted to get it all out of your system. Well, I wanted to, I wanted to find the right girl, mm -hmm. right? And it's like, I, I know that if I vanished off the face of the earth tonight at the uh, after party, she's going to be a great mother and my daughter will be raised by an amazing woman. Yeah. Right? So that's part of it, too. Like, you look at, look at everything. Her, you know, she's from a great family. She's in the, she's in the army. My girl was in the army for wow. seven years. Yeah. She's a, you know, I mean, she's smart. She's... She's just checks all the boxes for gotcha. me. So um, I'm, I, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm super lucky. And she doesn't, you know, she, she doesn't give me a hard time about doing my thing. And, and quite honestly, like when she's like, hey, I'm going out for dinner with the girls. I'm like, great. I get to watch TV at a reason with the volume at a reasonable level. <laughs> Um, <laughs> right, like, like sitting here, like we're not allowed to listen. There's no volume yeah. on the TV. Like everything changes. I, I used to sleep um, with a room 60 degrees with the TV on, and now it's 87 degrees and it's dark, and I just, you know, sit there and sweat to death. Um, so everything changes. But um, yeah, when she goes out, I'm like, all right, you know, let's watch some sports. Like, uh, you know, throw on a documentary or whatever, something that she's never going to want to watch. But um, yeah, man, I, I'm, I, I, don't, I don't feel like I missed out on anything. So yeah, there's I, no part of me that goes. Maybe I cut it a little bit close Yeah. in terms of 46. But I, I think you're good. I Thanks, think you're bro. still good. I don't think you're time to hit the, hit the no, you know, what, panic what, button yet. What, you, what don't you hit just, the panic button and do something. Clearly. What for you the say, sake of When you it. say you cut it a little bit close. Meaning that like I'm, as, I'm, as now I, I see that how active uh, being a parent. Mm -hmm. You have to be active. You know what I mean? It's Being like, an old dad is tough, is what you're saying. Not that you're old, but, no, but if I mean, you I, did if wait were, longer. If I were in my mid-50s or 60 right now, yeah, it would be. Yeah, I'm, right, right. Right. The, the don't burn the candle on both ends type but of thing. I, but I also, I always, my friends that are sort of in the same boat as me, but I had a baby. I, one thing I always tell them, I was like, just don't do it a second before you're ready. Make sure that you're ready to do that. Did everything you're saying, like if the, even if the cameras weren't here, we were just chopping right. it up, I would be like, dude, 100%. I tell people all the time. Just don't get pressured. Do it when you're ready. And when take your right. freaking, right. especially if you're a guy. Right. It's different with the guys and girls. Right. Okay, I'll never forget this story in my life. Like I say it all the time on the show that I do, Sauscast. It was my 40th birthday. It's a year and a half ago. I have a bar in South Beach. All my friends came. It was great. It was awesome. I had just gotten out of a, re a relationship that, you know, we thought we were going to figure it Pieces out. Pieces of the puzzle lining yeah, up for exactly. a big night. How was that? So I'm, 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 I'm 40. All my friends are there, people. It's freshly you know, single Freshly at the single. Club. And my, like boy, my boy, Miguel, comes up to me. Yo, Adam, what's up, bro? What's <laughs> up? Happy birthday, dog. What's up, 40? Man, you're killing it, bro. You're making money. Life's good. You're doing your podcast. Like, that's what I'm doing. You're killing it, dude. Sick. And he goes, oh, damn, is that Laura over there? I go, yeah, man. He goes, what's up with Laura? I go, yeah, you know, she's just, she's married? No. She got any kids, bro? What's up? Like, Laura was a hot chick. Right. Uh, I go, no, I don't think. He goes, damn, Laura? Damn. Like, felt bad for Laura, but we're the same age, 40. And he's hyping it's me up as like. A bit of a double standard. A bit of a double standard. A bit of a double standard. And like, it's also yo, a double standard in Hollywood. Right. Yeah. Well, you know, it, it's funny. A friend of mine, um, uh, a female friend of mine, was married for a long time. Uh, she ended up getting divorced. Um, she lost a bunch of weight, and you know, she went on a little bit of a run. And uh, it's like she got judged a little bit. And I was like, you know what? This is double standard. Yeah. Because if it was a guy that got divorced, lost, lost a bunch of weight, and was out like hanging out with young chicks, he'd be cool. He'd be and the man. There's something wrong with yes. her doing. It's double standard. Yes. I told her. I was like, yo. Get it, get it. You told you, go I for told a girl. Her, go, please get it. Go after it. Like, yeah. So it is. It is a bit of a double standard. So you're saying he was like, oh God, wow, Laura was. What's what, what happened to her? It was more like right? it was like there was like disappointment. Celebrating you being single and it was like killing he, it at forty. And, exactly. But like, oof, Damn, poor man. Laura. Yikes. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and, and uh, so your question is like, is that it? No, I'm just like that yeah. concept. It's, it's not the same for men and women, even at age 40. Right. Right. Whether right. that's in social dynamics, whether that's in Hollywood, you know, how many leading women start, you know, beautiful leading women can sustain their careers past 40. It's the sexual market value. Right. It's different between men and women. Right. And ultimately, I'm saying like you're still good looking, suave, well dressed, well spoken, 48 year old dude crushing it how many 48 year olds chicks are can be just had a kid 15 months ago right there, yeah, there is a double there. standard they're out there right right that's there people i guess are a little bit more judgmental i guess um 
Yeah, I tell you, man, Hollywood is 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 changing is changing now, and I don't know if it's I don't know if it's the drugs, and by that I mean. You know, I don't know. People seem to be holding up. I mean, do you see some of these? Oh, you're saying these, like looking better like, than ever. You see Charlize, Charlize Theron has oh, lost nothing about off of her fast forward. Forget about it. Yeah, she's, she's lost nothing off of her fast These are elite fast. women you're right, talking right, right, about, right, right, Kevin. Right. I, see, I see what you're saying. But yeah, yes. I mean, it, you know, it can, it can be done. But I, yeah, I think, I think, you know, but I mean, I guess the same could be said for guys too, right? I mean, like eventually, you know, they're going to go with the younger or you fall into. It's really a great, for an, an actor, a great place to fall into like I mean, Brian Cranston can just crush it the way he's been crushing it for the rest of his life yes. Breaking like, he doesn't have to be like yes. good looking he could just be murdering it yes. on like a cool show and doing whatever he wants yes. you know well because ultimately you know, this isn't controversial men are very much judged on their status right. women are very much judged on their looks it is what it is you know I know there's people that are going to cancel Adam he thinks that girls need to be pretty it's like kind of that concept right there yeah, I mean, I think there's pressure on guys too, right? I mean, to keep it together. Hundred you know percent. I mean, it's like you know, it's you gotta, you do have to, you know, watch what you eat, and you gotta, you know, mm -hmm. keep things in moderation and take care of yourself to a certain there, extent. There, there's a thing in the in the the manosphere, you know, what you know, red pill community. I'm not sure how you're familiar with this concept, but they say that for a man is make money, make muscles, like keep your looks, and then just have some game, and then depending right. on where you're at. You know, the more money you have, maybe the less game you can have. The less money you have, maybe the more game. You could be a big stud, and you know, so like. <laughs> yeah, or, or, and also, well, game, but also like personality, right? Game, I mean, like, exactly. Yeah, 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 I mean, yeah, that yeah, kind yeah. of a. Right, a little, little exactly. swag. You gotta, you, swag. Gotta, you gotta have a little, you gotta have a little something. You got swag, something. bro. Do I? Mean, I, mean, I don't know. I don't know. It's, it's, thank you. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, come on. Um, let's go back to this concept of like, you know, the, the, the co star, the, the number two guy, right? right? So. In Entourage, it was Vinny, Vinny Chase. I mean, right. he was the movie star, right? right. Um, so, in my life, I told you that I've had, and now yeah, I'm the number, chances, right. the, the, the number two guy to Pat, let's say, right? The co host. But right when Entourage was kind of winding down, this is 2010, 2011, final season or so before the movies, um, my best friend in the world became Vinny Chase. You're like, all right, what the hell are you talking about? Well, it's fine, let's hear the name. Yeah, exactly. Girl, so, my down. best friend at the time married. Kim Kardashian. So he was a six foot nine oh, stud yeah. basketball player. His name's Chris Humphreys. Of course, he just had a baby, this? didn't he? Did they he did not have a baby, baby. Not, that, not that I know of. Uh, did he get married? I think he had a baby, bro. <laughs> he did not have a baby. If he did, I'd be freaking out right now. I right, hate to break it to you. I'm gonna call Chris right now. <laughs> um, but yeah, of course. I'm, right, I'm no. willing to bet oh, no, that he, he did was, not have he a baby. Was, he was thrust into the, yes. into the yes. spotlight uh, unfairly almost. Like I, I don't think anybody could have seen that coming himself included. Whirlwind in fact, didn't situation. Kim Kardashian kind of apologized to him. Yes. Like after the fact, like she one chewed of her him up, regrets. She spit him out, but they, right. there was love there. Like right. they dated for a year. Right. And uh, just quick story, he calls me one day. He's like, yo, what up, bro? Because he's very kind of secretive, close to the vest. And he says, because uh, I'm in Miami, I'm a Miami guy. And he says, um, hey, uh, we're, we're, I'm coming down with my, my new girl. We're going to come down to Miami. We're going to kick it. We're going to go out at the club, live, Fountain Blue. We'll see you there. Just just talk to her real quick, coordinate, and uh, we'll go, uh, and we'll kind of plan it out. Kevin, zero heads up who his new girl is. Zero. Right. Hey, Adam, what's up? Um, uh, yeah, Chris says so good things about you. I hear you're in Miami. I know of all the people in Miami, and Dave Grotman, and all these. I'm like, who is this? She's like, it's Kim, silly. I'm like, Kim who? Legit. Right. Kim Kardashian, stop playing, blah, blah. It's 2011. Right. She's still, okay. She was, uh, she was big, she was big deal Massive. then, too. It's okay. crazy. Massive. They've, they've, they've been at it for a minute now. The now it's 10 years later. Now it's like the Kylies and the Kendalls. Geniuses. And fast forward, there's a whole year romance. Like, I'm, I'm living at Kim's house for a year. Like, not for the year, but during that year. We're going on trips to Mexico. She's good friends with the Girls Gone Wild guy, Joe Francis. So I'm like, I'm living this He's freaking Kardashian <laughs> lifestyle for a freaking year, dude. Like, right. The whole thing, we get married. I walked Chloe down the aisle, groomsmen, the whole freaking thing, dude. And ultimately, what's my point is I was the number two guy. I realized, all right, Chris is the guy. Right. Chris is Vinny Chase. He is Vinny Chase. But I was E. Right. Okay. And I know you're like, who labeled you E? It was like, <laughs> no, 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 no. I, there right. was definitely my boy Josh, who was turtle, 100%, smoking right. weed, doing his thing. Like, my boy Gio, 
when I tell you, thousand percent Johnny drama, right? Like if you're like, oh yeah, that, that guy. So I learned very quickly, okay, how do you operate as like the sidekick guy? Like you're a guy, but you're not the guy. Right. Like I'm not on the cover of People magazine with Kim. Like, right. so you were the kind of that guy. And but you, you gotta said, still be the guy, right? I mean, hundred. You gotta have a hold still frame. Still gotta be Scottie Pippen, right? Still, still, but Scottie, Scottie Pippen's Pippen. not MJ. Right. He's still but Scottie Pippen. You, you said with Pat, you said, um, you know, talking about success and finding your lane is, you never ha hate on your boys for finding success. I, I, you now have a zero hater aid in you. You appreciate success because a rising tide lifts all ships. I've searched my soul for any of, of that. I really have, really? Like, like years ago, like when, yeah. and, and it just was never there. I, I was genuinely happy and right, ships rise together, Yes. right? So I always like, I don't know, I, I, can't, I can't explain it. It was, always made me very happy because I also knew what, what good, guys, what, what good yeah. guys they are, you know, and what good friends they are. So, um, but yeah, you're right, the ships do, the, the ships rise together. 100%. Right? It, it, it certainly doesn't hurt you or have anything to do with you. It's not gonna hurt. Oh my God, like, what are the odds that, you know, multiple guys in a group pop? Well, I'm here to tell you it could happen. that it happens. Exactly. It happened to me. You know? Yeah, and because there's like, so I've, I've, I've taken that mindset. Again, entourage, all my growing up right. watching it, right? Vinny Chase, E, cool, we're all it. Then it kind of happens to me in real life. Right. At least in that year or so where like, and then the, the chicks, the, I'll be the number two guy around these, all right. these chicks, no problem, right? Right. Uh, and now, with Pat, right, and I'm more than comfortable being like, yeah, I'm the, I'm the, I'm the sidekick, I'm the co-host, right, and it's I'm rooting for Pat to succeed because if he succeeds and Bayou Tamas succeeds, then I succeed. Zero percent, I'm like, I could do Pat's job, bro. I'm better. Right. Than, fuck no, that. That's the kiss of death. Yes, right? you don't, you don't want that, and and you don't want that around you either. Nobody wants to be surrounded no. with that. So well, it's, that's, good. Uh, that's good to hear. To, for the young that's people out hear. there, appreciate your friends who have success. Lose the haterade. Even you DM'd Pat. What's up, man? Respect. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, I, yes. you know, there are people who you go, oh, um, you know, you don't want to, you're somehow too cool to, to say. You're, you're, people are quick to DM chicks or your girls to tell them how hot they are, but you can't tell a guy like, hey, man, I like your stuff. Keep up the good work. I not ask him for anything. Yeah. Just not afraid to tell you, hey, man, I, I appreciate what it is that you're doing. That is you so freaking powerful. Like what, what Kevin just said is, you'll DM a chick, no problem. When's the last time you DM'd a guy, hey bro, like not looking for anything, just respect, love You're what you do. It. And now, when, yeah. when, would, when did you shoot Pat that message? How long ago? Eight, nine months ago. Right, within yeah. the last yeah, year. Yeah, that wasn't. Uh, and now you're the guest speaker, <laughs> closing, yeah. like that's right. what and, can and, happen. And though. the other thing too is when it's not by design, right? There right, no there was motives. no, you weren't asking for money, you weren't trying to come on the podcast, no, you just, it's like, respect. Yeah, it. I was like scrolling through the shit and like, oh, you know. Awesome, last couple of things for you, bro. Um, you've been pretty open that you're like, dude, I'm, I'm running on a few hours of sleep right <laughs> yeah. here. And you said something in there, because I was listening intently. I'm like, oh, I'm gonna be speaking with Kevin after, let me understand this. You talked about rejection. Right. Okay. Um, you said in Hollywood rejection, the rejection rate is like 99%. You go for a role. And you're probably not going to get it. You're probably not going to get it, dude. <laughs> right. Okay. You know, we have a, our entire audience are entrepreneurs, right? right? They're they're in sales, right? If you're not any sort of entrepreneur, you got to be in sales. In sales, there's a lot of rejection. You right. know, there's just like, all right, like, all right, right. like, all right. And then uh, with women, a lot of rejection. Of course. I mean, you know, I, I, there's guys that come up to me, Adam, dude, I went up to this girl, I asked her for a number, she said, no, bro, I'm just gonna go home. Like, you went up to one girl, dude? Right. You went for one role? Right. You went for one sales call? Yeah. So walk me through rejection in business, in life, and, and even with women. I, I, always, I always equate it to, uh, like, it's funny because like, I've never really, have no business like speaking about athleticism and, <laughs> and sports, but I do equate it to almost like if you look at it like a game, right? All right, so you're down a couple runs in the seventh inning. Still got six, they still got to get you out six more times. Yeah. All right. Couple like, innings left, baby. Still got the fourth quarter yeah, here. Right. Still. Yeah. Right. So you had a bad third quarter. All right. So I mean, you come out, you come out firing in the fourth quarter. You yeah. got to finish the game. You got to finish the game. So you use that mindset, whether it's in picking up women, like, yeah, picking up because, uh, all right, gigs. Or, or like a gig happens or a gig doesn't work out and you fail at it. You're like, all right, well, that's just like a bad penalty. Yeah. Took a bad penalty, right? Uh, you know, got the, so I got to pick it up. And, you yeah. know, so that's kind of how I've always equated it. It's like, it's never over. Until right. It's over. Did you have to develop that mindset? Or that it was that kind of, you've always had, all right, bro, like, does, you know, 
Well, Fall down ten times, be, get up eleven. Because I've because I've had lots of stumbles and recoveries. Yeah. So you know, once you learn how to recover yeah. from stumbling, you almost get used to it because you know that it can be done. Not, it's almost like I, I would say to it's like the first time you get your heart broken, you're like, I'm gonna die. Straight up. I'm gonna die. I yes. think I'm dying. Right. And then the second time your heart's broken, you're like. Well, fuck, I, it's, it, it feel, I feel bad, but I'm, I guess I I'm going to live. Right? <laughs> and then eventually you go like, all right, I'll be all right. I yeah. feel great right now. I'm yeah. some, you know what I mean? So you, you learn how to, how to deal with the first time something like that happens. You're like, oh, my God, yes. the world's over. It's not the end but of the you world. Learn, you learn that, you know, the, the comeback. When you, when you, like, you're 48 now. I've already addressed the fact that I think you're a stud. You got the, the swag, 48. I assume you do some mentorship of... 28 year olds, 22 year olds, 20 like guys you meet on set. Right. Do you what do you coach them through with that rejection mentality? Whether it's business, life, women, whatever. You're like, they're like Kevin. Yeah, I didn't get the part. You're like, bruh, you're right. 24 years old. Right. Well, you know, let me coach yeah, you up a yeah, little bit. What yeah, do you say no. to those guys? Why? Well, I, I, I again, it's like you, you just gotta, you just gotta, you gotta toughen. You just gotta have, you gotta have thick skin. And in, in the entertainment yes. game, you just have to have thick skin, right? Yeah. Because. You know, it's gonna, like I said, it's probably gonna be no. And then one day it won't be, and then it'll be no again. Yeah. And then, you know, so it's, for me, my, my thing with people is, A, like, you know, you're either working hard or you're not, right? And, and you're, if you're not working hard, you're cutting down your chances of success a great deal. Mm -hmm. It's like the guy in there that asked the question, and, and it's funny too, because I didn't want to say it to him, but he just basically was like, yo, how do I start getting into clubs? And, uh, and like be fam become famous, right? He wasn't really talking about acting, right? He's like, well, I, what, well what, what, what's the, what connections? No, 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 I told you, you go to acting class. He didn't want to hear about acting class and, and um, you know, and doing theater. Yeah. He wanted to hear about how, how do I, I get famous. on Entourage yeah. and like go out to Hollywood. How can know? I get rich quick? <laughs> right. And Essentially I, was what right, it is. Like he didn't how can I cut he, all the corners the and not put in the work? that he could have heard come out yeah. of my mouth was, don't do anything except acting class and stage for two years. Yeah. He, that was like, wait a second. So I don't want to, I'm not waiting two years. I want to be on the sequel to Entourage right now and I want to be living in, in Hollywood. It's funny, I could see it on his face. You know, he wanted the shortcut and it just isn't. Now, sometimes it is, but yeah. if I were mentoring somebody through that, that's what I would tell. Dude, that's actually um, this, this concept of get rich quick, right? right. So. You know, the show that I talk about, I was a money guy for many, many years, and now my show is where finance meets romance, right? right. So finding success, but also like, you know, having women and, and around you and relationships and all that. And I, one of the things that I talk about is like this get rich quick. Like I became a millionaire at 35. I was right. broke as shit living on my friend's couch at 25. 10 years of eating shit, all right, great. And now the last five, six years, I, I really just try to give back and tell people, Look, bro, like there's no shortcuts. You got it. I was making cold calls for years. You were taking shitty roles for years, right? And uh, so this concept of get rich quick, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get to my point, is that, um, you know, whether it's you're a man or a woman and you want to get rich quick on crypto or Forex or trading and you just kind of want to, you know, like, you're, like the guy said, how do I just, I don't want to go to acting class, I just want to be <laughs> right, an entourage. Right. But for women, you know, they, they'll do OnlyFans or they'll do like get rich quick things. So... And I'm, I'm, I'm racking my brain with this get rich quick thing. And I'm thinking, oh shit, on Entourage, Vinny was banging Sasha Gray at one point. Okay, right. you're like, where are you going with this dude? So women these days, Sasha Gray, famous porn star, Entourage was one of the first shows, if not the first that like featured yeah. a porn star. Yeah. Right? right? So now you have these, uh, like the Mia Khalifas of the world, right. or the, um, what's her name? Lana Rhodes, who allegedly maybe just had a kid with KD, and there's women. So on TikTok, so, so yeah. heard the rumblings on TikTok. What is it? <laughs> no, I don't oh, know. KD, that, that, okay, no, exactly. Or about Lana Rhodes. Yes. Well, yeah, but I, yeah. She just had a baby in the, in the, in the Logan Paul what podcast. He was like, it's a famous NBA player. Like, he put it out there, right? right. So uh, allegedly KD, whatever, but we'll knows. see. But this concept of these women, men too, but I'm not shitting on women, but Lana Rose is a full-on porn star, but she's become famous for it. Right. Mia Khalifa has become famous from it. So for every, you know, it's like the 1% thing. Yeah, they became famous, but then there's a lot of women that are going to do this OnlyFans stuff. And there's a lot of guys that are going to just try to get rich off crypto. But going back to my point of, you know, putting in the work, like, 
in Hollywood, you might see some girls do some things just to get a role. You know, there's short term and there's long term. Right. I guess what I'm what I'm ultimately asking is, you know, I've never really, and this is going to sound naive. I've actually not ever really seen that smoking gun. What's that? You hear the stories about this girl did this for that role, but yeah. I've never been able to confirm like, yo, one million percent, yes. so and so did this for this. I mean, you hear the stories, yeah. but I, I had not, I have not ever seen it other than to just sort right. of hear about in it. In Hollywood. Right? In saying. Hollywood, I'm sorry. Right, no, right. respect. And I'm not even like trying to right. get into, all right, what have you seen? But it's more short term, quick money right. that comes with risk versus playing the long game. Right. I'm a big believer but in getting- But is it a double standard thing again? Right. I'm not even, like, I, I, what, this is just the concept, whether you're doing OnlyFans, you're a chick, whether right. you're a guy getting crypto, or whether you're a guy doing OnlyFans, or whether you're a girl doing crypto. <laughs> right. Like, this is not a guy-girl thing. It's just the concept of, so one of the things I say is, I don't want to get rich quick. I want to build wealth slow, right? And that's kind of so like yeah, that's, what you're saying with your saying, career yeah. is that, right. like, you're 48, dude. You could be working until you're 58, 68. Like, right. you've, never, you've never been in the tabloids of, you know, you didn't get caught up in that Me Too yeah. stuff. Like, Kevin did this. Kevin, you know, like, ultimately what I'm asking is short-term versus long-term thinking long-term, having a vision. Well, you have to. It's a long-term. It's a long-term play. And, you know, even, even when we were, you know, on Entourage, I, I can remember sitting around going like, guys, you know, there's going to have to be another move made. Like, this isn't it. This isn't just You're like telling everybody. the guys this. Yeah. You yeah. know, this isn't that's going to everybody sailing off into the sunset. Yeah. Like, there's going to be other moves that have to be made. You know, I, 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 I always kind of sense that. And, and, you know, there's something kind of exciting about that. Something Even at the height gender. of Entourage, while this is every, all the greatness is happening and HBO, yeah, yeah, you, like, you know, guys, we're going to have to have other well, stuff Well, eventually, you know, like, you got to, you know, you got to kind of keep it together, right? Yeah. And, like, strategize on, on the next move. Because coming off a TV show like that, you know, can be can be hard, but you know, it's funny. We we've all we all talk about that, and it's funny. It doesn't bother anybody at all to be known. Like, you know, like we love it. Like, it doesn't, doesn't bother them that they're that, known like, for entourage, or right? Or like, you know, like well, like Jerry was. Like, I heard it's funny because I heard this Jerry on this interview, and they asked him if it Jerry Ferrara, yeah, so, it hasn't yeah. bothered him that uh, you know people know him as certainly said absolutely not. I mean, I love it. I'm proud of it, and yeah. I'm the same way. Yeah. Right. And and, you know, you get that next role. Listen, Ed O'Neill was uh, Al Bundy yeah. until he was married with children. Right. He was on Married with Children. He was Al Bundy and, and until he was on Modern Family. Right. right. Uh, Brian Cranston was the dad on Malcolm in the Middle. Yeah. Until he was he on got Seinfeld breaking, before that. He got as breaking the bed. You know what I mean? Yeah. Katie Seagal, who was Peg Bundy. Yes. You know, so if you're good, you're going to work. And it all yeah. it all shakes out in the end with with the people that have the goods. What, what about Jeremy Piven? Listen, this guy's a world-class actor. Yeah. He's a world-class actor. He does his own thing, marches to the beat of his own drummer. He and I have always gotten along. Yeah. Um, we just have, just, I think, just sort of different interests. Like, you know, Jerry and Dylan and I are, like, big golf Yankee yeah. fans. You know what I mean? Like, we're always, you know, talking about sports. But, you know, Piven is, you know, he's, dude, he, three in a row. <laughs> three Emmys in a row, Piven. For Ari Gold, Ferrari. you're saying? Yeah. Yeah. Like, like Don Rickles or somebody like it's been done very few times. Like wow. he, you know, he pitched a perfect game, right? So iconic. I mean, all you guys have iconic characters here. And um, transitioning to the last part of uh, what we're talking about is these days, uh, you're in the podcast game, right? Right. What's your name of your company? Action. Action Park Media. Action Park yeah. Media. Um, Sick podcast, the Victory podcast, Victory. Yeah, right? that's that's fun. I mean, that's that's. I kind of was talking. You to produce people. this, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. You, um, Doug, Doug Allen, Allen yeah. and Kevin uh, and Kevin Dillon, yeah. Johnny Drama. So walk. I mean, you're a Hollywood guy. You've been in movies with Leo. You've been in, you know, uh, yeah, Jer the, Jeremy Pitt, the whole thing. But now you're in the podcast game. Yeah. Um, you know, I'm in the podcast game, but like I said, you know, I'm in Atlanta shooting a movie, right? I, yeah. I, I'm doing what I, I'm, I, I am, I'm, I am where I am. Right? Yeah. I may be doing a podcast, maybe directing. So maybe it is, but it, yeah. I, I, I won't be put in any lane. Straight up, I can do whatever I want. Right? Gotcha. Um, but it's so fun, and it's so easy, and, and you know, it's it's funny. We talk about this concept of. So you know, you used to do DVD commentary, right? Remember, you know how you can do your DVD. You commentary? used to do that. No, I'm oh, saying like whatever. Yeah, people gotcha. do DVD commentary, but. When you do, D we would do the DVD commentary for Entourage. It would be whatever five, six months after we shot, so yeah. the information is fresh. 
but looking back on these sh- on these episodes, so like we'll get together for the podcast, we'll watch an episode, and then and then talk about it. And yeah. it's funny what time does. Nobody's lying. They just see. They just remember. It's been six months. So it's been four months. Well, yeah. no, but it was. This has been six months and fifteen years. Is oh what I'm wow! Saying. How you remember things? It's like no, Kev. I'm pretty sure that you. I was not drinking that. I'm pretty <laughs> sure. Like he's like, what are you talking? Yeah. And we're like sitting there, and it's like none, none of us are lying. But it's this thing of like, time does things to your yeah. memory. It's like oh, I don't remember it like that. That's not how I remember it. I don't remember, you know. So it, it it's been interesting to to see how to to go back and 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 say how we what we remember about yeah. the show all these years later, as opposed to when you do it two months later, you're like, all right, I, I, this one had the flu that day. It yeah. rained. We got now. It's just kind of like your your memory. And it's, 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 it's one of those things, dude, where it's like. You know the fish story. It's like I caught a fish. It was right. this big, and then a couple years later, it was this big. Right. Now, the fish right. was this big. It's right. like I don't know about that. Or buddy. the fish gets smaller. I'm like, dude, I don't know, man. Are you crazy? I think it was a dude. You were wasted, bro. I was not- <laughs> right. That's awesome, dude. The one thing that I will say this is what I want to get your perspective on is movies, shows. It's scripted. Right. Podcasts, carte blanche, bro. Right. Wide open, unscripted. Right. What do you enjoy more? There's, I mean, maybe not. What do you enjoy more? But the difference between the two. It's literally apples and oranges. I mean, yeah. it's, so, it's so different. Um, you know, it's funny too. People will be like, oh, you're so much funnier than E. I'm like, well, yeah, that's because I'm, that's a character that yeah. I played, right? So, you know, about the podcast, I get to be, flash a little bit more of my personality. Acting is just a, a much different thing. Like, even last night, I mean, it's like, there's night shoots, you're yeah. going at five, and you're like, you're out in the streets of Atlanta in the dark and you know everybody's it's just a different it's a different thing it's obviously m- more complicated and and uh, but it's a different kind of adrenaline you know podcasting is just fun it's, it's fun you it's shoot fun. the shit yeah. exactly so the uh, respect on that I, 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 I obviously massive entourage fan I found out about Victory the Podcast from my buddy Paul Escarcega I, he's gonna freak out if when he sees this interview biggest entourage fan ever Dude, they got a podcast. He's gonna see this. He's gonna be like, hell yeah. Last question for you. Uh, in terms of legacy, I say like when you're chilling, you own your time. You can do whatever you want with your time. Right. You said I can do whatever I want. Uh, you know, you. Or not, not that I can do whatever I yeah. want. I choose to choose do whatever, to do whatever I want you want. And not put myself in any box. Exactly. So walk us through legacy. What you want to be known for? The second half of the uh, the back nine, if you. Uh, that's a, that's a, that's, a, that's a really good question. Um, that that's another thing too that you'll start to think about eventually and maybe maybe it, it, it's just my daughter that kind of started this but mm-hmm. I never really thought much about it right and I've had a few thoughts a few thoughts is like what is your legacy right and what do you want your legacy to be and what will your legacy be and then there's the part of you that goes like well does any of it really matter <laughs> right we're all going to this is going to end this on a dark note. We're all going to die. All matter, we're die. all going to die. It's our Armageddon right now. You weren't in that movie, bro. Eventually, like, it's not going to really yeah. matter, right? So it's like, for me, you know, just, you know, just, um, I, I, and this is so corny. I, this is not the answers you want to hear. I want, I want my, I want to be a good dad. I know, like, the, the career stuff will be what it'll be, right? But yeah. I, I want to, I, I, the next chapter of my life is strongly focused on my family. Well, that's what I wanted to hear, bro, yeah. because like the career stuff would only Well, it comes and goes. It's great. It it's a fulfilling, it but, but it's, your it's, daughter is yeah, a different level yeah, of Yeah, of course. Awesome, of course. dude. This has been awesome, bro. Great. Um, where can the people find you? Where can they see you? Podcast the whole thing. Yeah, so um, you know, Victory the Podcast is uh, one we do. Action Park Media, we have probably 10, 12 podcasts running through there. Um, yeah, like we said, we said on the panel, I'm not a big social media guy, but you know, I'm around uh, Mr. Kevin Connolly. And by the way, that's only because Kevin Connolly was taken. <laughs> hey, people be like, oh, Mr. Kevin Connolly. I'm like, yeah, there's 500 other Kevin Connollys. Yeah, I'm a freaking gentleman. You think I, I want you? Right, trust me, regular Kevin Connolly was would've taken. Would have been okay. Right, I would have been happy with that. I don't need to be called Mr. But um, yeah, man, I'm, I'm, I'm around. And, and like I said, you know, and it, it, it's interesting, right? You don't have to put yourself anywhere, right? Like, I am here in Miami at the at the, the conference yeah uh, tomorrow I will be in Atlanta finishing up the movie and next week I'll be in there doing the podcast right and back in and LA that's, yeah that's just what that looks like and yeah. then who knows you know so it, it 
it just it just is what it is right awesome dude give this man a follow uh check out the victory podcast mr kevin Connolly at, in the house mr, at kevin. mr. Kevin. kevin awesome thank you brother. so much that For was sure, fun bro. man that, that was, was good sick. thanks dude